Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. This video is an overview of one of the chapters in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that's available for uh, purchase on my site, Voitanos.io. This overview video is gonna give you an idea of everything that the chapter uh, covers. You can learn more by checking out the description uh, in the notes below the video. Um, if you got any questions about this chapter or about the course in general, just make sure you drop a comment uh, below in, in the uh, below the video and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview to this chapter. When building SharePoint framework solutions, regardless if they're client-side web parts or UI extensions, there's almost always a visual component to these controls. And while you can implement these interfaces by hand yourself, why not take advantage of a modern web framework? Frameworks make things like data binding, event handling, and building of the UI and state management so much easier. So in this chapter, you're gonna learn how you can leverage the popular React web framework from Facebook to implement your SharePoint framework customizations. React is used by Microsoft across Office 365, including SharePoint, to build consistent user experiences. You will learn how to not only leverage React in your SharePoint framework components, but also how to leverage the provided Fabric React controls that's used by the SharePoint team, as well as community control contributions. Let's take a look at what we're gonna cover in this chapter. This chapter will start with a look at what React is and how it's presented by Facebook, the creator and maintainer of this web framework. And then we're gonna dive in and explore the component model and look at things like properties, state, and lifecycle. You can think of this as a brief primer into the React web framework. Next up, we're gonna explore the relationship React and Office and SharePoint and the SharePoint framework have with the React web framework. And then we're gonna dive into our first demo. Now I'm gonna warn you, this is not a short demo. You will see how to create an interactive client-side web part as a multi-component React application covering properties, events, states, as well as the concept of lifting the state. Next up, this chapter is gonna cover Fabric React or the Office UI Fabric and how you can use some special controls within your components. And then in the last demo, you're gonna see how you can leverage Fabric React, where we will take the web part that we created in the first demo, and we're gonna implement Fabric React controls within it. But before we get started, there are a few special notes that I'd like to call out before we get started with this. Let's first talk about the goals and the non-goals related to this chapter. Now, I'm not gonna try and teach you everything there is to know about React inside this chapter. That's way too much to cover, and frankly, it's way beyond the scope here. My goal for you at the end of this chapter is simply make it so that you are comfortable in starting your first React project in the SharePoint framework. I want you to be able to open up an existing React project and understand how to get around and what things are going on, and not like you feel like if you just open it up and you're seeing some foreign language that you've never seen before. There's a significant amount of resources available to you for learning React, from newsletters to websites to articles and videos and other courses. But start at reactjs.org. That's the homepage for React. You're gonna to find tons of additional stuff from there and throughout the community that I'm not gonna cover here. Like I said, when you finish this chapter, you should be able to create your own React-based SharePoint framework solutions or open up someone else's solution and feel comfortable versus feeling like you're looking at a foreign language. Now, another thing I want you to think about is that I'm gonna address the TypeScript flavor of React. Now, there isn't a special version of React for TypeScript, that's not what I mean. But I'm gonna assume that using TypeScript when you're working in your React projects. Why is that? Well, because SharePoint Framework is founded on TypeScript, so it's a good bet that you're gonna be using TypeScript in your SharePoint Framework solutions. Just know that TypeScript is not a requirement or a prerequisite for working with React. For instance, if you were going to use React in some self-standing application, you could just do it in a standard JavaScript style syntax. You can learn more about how to do that on the reactjs.org website. 